our planet is sitting on a time bomb. Ghana is at the mercy of the drastic impact of climate change, unmitigated sunshine, unpredictable rainfall, and depleting soil fertility, among others. How can the country deal with the threat of climate change while solving some of its basic problems? In a series of human-centered stories, we shine a light on some of the most basic innovative ideas that could help bring change and what the Ghana Climate Innovation Center is doing to scale up these ideas. The climate is changing fast across the world and its impact on humans and the planet has been there. The warming of the globe has caused rising sea levels that have displaced thousands in coastal communities here in Ghana and around the world. Vector-borne diseases such as malaria have become more common and Ghana has experienced long periods of drought and extreme weather conditions that have left farmers struggling. Because of the weather, how they are falling the trees, the rains too don't come as we expect them. Mm. Because of the falling of the trees, in fact, we are suffering. We are suffering. Because of the rain, rain does not rain early. That is why the yams is not developing as all the years. For example, when you look at down here, it happened that the down is not drying. And at the beginning of growing, it was not like that. Because there is no more water in it. That's why the yam is now growing like that. It's grow to this level of it. If it were to be rain, there will be leaves, more leaves on it. Even when you hide on it, like somebody will not see you. Experts are warning the situation could worsen in the years ahead. The World Bank is projecting that if not properly managed, more land will be lost, extreme weather events will destroy more of the country's infrastructure, and Ghana's agricultural GDP will decline by 3 to 8 percent by the middle of the century. Over the period, um, a period of about uh, three to five years, we've realized that the rains, we get one or two rains at the beginning of the year. Farmers rushing, they prepare their young mount and they plant. And then there is a, a, a drought spread for maybe another two months. And the yam that they have planted get rotten in the yam months. To reduce the long-term cost of climate change and create opportunities for sustainable growth, the Ghana Climate Innovation Center is supporting local entrepreneurs with the knowledge and resources to develop climate smart technologies. It's really about ensuring that um, the economy of tomorrow is resilient and we're serving, we're, we're starting that process through supporting businesses today so that they can go the long haul tomorrow. Conrad Balig, an agribusiness entrepreneur, is one of such young people. He has been trained to adopt climate smart agri techniques on his farm so the environment is not harmed. My dad is a retired agri officer so we used to do a lot of uh, gardening back home and I can tell you it has always been beneficial. So I realized that, well, if we did it on a small scale at home and I used to be very active in that, why then don't we roll it out in a larger scale, provided we have the resources to do that. And so I decided to start venturing into that and that is how come we set it up. Conrad is a graduate from the University of Development Studies with a degree in Integrated Development. He is both a teacher and a social entrepreneur. But nothing excites him more than agribusiness. He applies both theoretical knowledge and practical experiences gained undertaking backyard gardening during childhood to his agribusiness activities today. Every morning, he makes the one hour journey from his home office in Wa to Mabase in the Wa East district to work on a 6.5 acre farm. The team I'm also working with are also becoming conscious of the fact that we are now in a certain space and we have to be careful. 
So you realize that some of our lands that are lying fallow right now, we have started applying organic manure to them so that by the coming year, those lands will be suitable for production so that we don't have to use um, fertilizer and other chemicals on the, 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 the crops because of the mindset that we have actually acquired from GCIC. So we, I mean, we are on our farm. Nobody will be here to see what we do. But they have given us the sense of being responsible and being accountable. Agricultural activities, including the clearing of forests, the application of chemicals, tillage, misuse of water, among others, are responsible for about 14 to 18 percent of all causes of global warming. On his farm, Conrad works to reduce that negative impact. The black voter lies close to his farm and he has all the available water to irrigate his fields. But in order to conserve water and protect the environment, he uses canals, shower and drip irrigation methods to irrigate, saving up to 80% of the water that would usually be used. If it were the other method, we will not be able to regulate the amount of water we need to put because the whole ground will get soaked throughout. But we, with this method, we're able to give sufficient water that is needed by the crops. Moving water from the black volta onto the farm requires energy. The most common source of power for irrigation is generators which burn fossil fuel, thereby increasing the earth's temperature. Smoke they emit also pollutes the atmosphere, causing damage to humans and other living organisms. Renewable energy like solar power, however, does not emit carbon dioxide at all. So Conrad has deliberately shifted the power source on his farm from fossil to solar. Just watch inside here. Look at this black. Just watch the, the tube here. All this is what this pump is emitting into the air. And we feel that we don't want to be a part of this. So if this is what it will do to the environment, then we cannot continue to be in this business. So we think that the solar will really help us to also save the environment. But we are also saying that this enclave, so if you have 40 farmers around here and they all have to rely on this, you can imagine the amount of CO2 they are going to emit. But we are putting out an enclave which will offer any interested party a small parcel of land because we are now working out to pull water onto the land without a machine like this by using solar systems. Inorganic pesticides contribute hugely to productivity on farms but they also have a negative impact on the environment. It is estimated that over 98 percent of pesticides reach destinations other than their target species, thereby destroying other organisms in the ecosystem. Also, pesticides tend to run off into water bodies and pollute the air. Conrad knows this too well, and so on his farm, he rather uses more environmentally friendly natural plant extracts to fight pests. We pluck some new leaves and uh, soak it and left it on the farm for three days. So we got the extract from that. And then we just used some to spray on the, 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 the seedlings that had germinated on the nursery bed. And interestingly, we realized that we didn't have any uh, uh, insects eating them up. So it was quite impressive and the germination was good. There is harm to humans who spray artificial chemicals without the right protective clothing because many of them suffer headaches, organ damage, catar among others. But not on Conrad farms, as this farmer here explains. We all know what chemical can do for a human when it goes into your system. But with this natural, that one day when you spray it today, even evening time, you can do, you can harvest, and you can eat it. But chemical, when you spray it today, you have to wait. Some take about a week, some two weeks before, some have even a month before you can eat it, which is very bad. A matured one. 
inorganic fertilizers play a crucial role in boosting farm yields, but they cause similar pollution challenges. Conrad chooses to rely on natural materials to fertilize his fields. We try as much as possible not to just even introduce foreign um, um, materials onto the land because then that, all those things will also go a long way to, to endanger the, the soils. One hundred years ago, Ghana had more than 8.2 million hectares of forest, but that has been depleted to about 1.6 million now. During the dry season, women in this community contribute further to the destruction as they resort to the cutting of trees to make firewood for sale as an alternative livelihood. Through Conrad's initiative, there is available land for all year-round farming using irrigation facilities he has built. One thing we also realize is that um, some of the young guys around who hitherto would have probably migrated to other places where they do um, some form of illegal mining, did not go. They had to help us weed all these fields. They have jobs to do now, growing tomatoes, green pepper, okra, watermelon, and other vegetables and fruits on this field during the dry season. Rashida is one of the beneficiaries of this initiative. She is 25 years old and has two children. Rashida dropped out of school at an early age, but she has promised her two little children they will attend school to the highest level possible. During the dry season, she struggles to take care of her children. Getting food becomes a problem. They have to manage the little food they save during the rainy season to survive. She says the dry season is the most difficult moment of their lives. We struggle a lot. Dry season there is always difficult for us as women. Some of us will go to the farm and go and cut uh, the shea bitter tree for Cheku. And some of us we will travel to the south uh, the distance, Kumasi side for Pau Pau people. Then some of us will go and work at the farm, then we get money and come back. But through Conrad's all year round farming initiative, all that has changed. Now Rashida can farm even during the dry season. She grows various vegetables. Currently, watermelon is the fastest moving product on the market. She spends time harvesting some of the fruits to go sell. She has harvested this watermelon field more than five times already over the last three months and picked about 1,000 balls of watermelon from the 1.5 acre field. This is evidence green farms can still be highly productive. She will then take them to the nearby Dolomo market or even the Upper West Regional Capital of Wa to sell. Right now that I'm selling it, I can get one city to buy uh, onions. And the other time, the, like, the dry season, I don't get anything. But now it's helped me so much more uh, to look after my children. I can get it to buy something for, my, for me myself. This region has seen a lot of young people migrate to the southern part of the country in search of better jobs. Amos moved to this location from Drapa, where he struggled to farm regularly because of the absence of adequate rains. He is happy now. With this, I make a lot of money from it because uh, there's water and then I do harvesting all around. All this has been possible because Conrad Balig received training from the Ghana Climate Innovation Center. People are very keen to be entrepreneurs because they feel that they can take control of, of, of their own lives. Many are ill-equipped to actually be entrepreneurs because they haven't been exposed to the rudiments of entrepreneurship and what it really means to be an entre entrepreneur, the, the principles of entrepreneurship. and. So that's what we, 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 we address here. Conrad has bigger dreams for his green agribusiness initiative. 
It's an enclave that we are looking at in the future. We should have not less than 50 outgrowers on that field. We should be producing nothing less than 250 tons of vegetables during a season. And if the season for vegetables is just only three months. In the next five years, we should be supplying companies outside Ghana with our vegetables because of the kind of vision that we have for this project. Yeah. Conrad is doing his part to keep the environment safe and he wants his community to follow suit. For Joy News, Joseph Opokugapo reporting.